back on these forces. Uh, well, you notice in, in the film, we did not explicitly come up with policy solutions because we didn't want to make the film too overtly political and didactic. Uh, but in the film, <laughs> it really isn't. Uh, I mean, Alan Simpson is there, <laughs> and Nick Hanauer in the, the business. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the implicit solutions are, are in the film. I mean, I think one uh, area that needs a lot of work has to do with minimum wage, raising it, and enlarging the earned income tax credit. Uh, another very, you may, yes, you may applaud. Uh, uh, and we can talk about these in detail. Uh, number we don't know if they're applying for the minimum wage or the earned in income tax credit. <laughs> and they really are both. Uh, they really, they, they fit together. Uh, it's not one or the other. Uh, the second has to do with uh, really over reinventing our public school system, for, including early childhood education. And, uh, and, and access uh, to affordable higher education. Um, this is quite being a political uh, uh, The third is, has to do with strengthening unions, particularly for low wage workers. One thing that ought to be said is that in this recovery, most of the job growth has been in retail, restaurant, hotel, hospital, surface transportation, child care, elder care. Now the common denominator is that these are very low paid occupations and they are not in direct international competition, nor are they directly threatened by technological displacement. So raising wages and unionization in this sector of the economy large and growing sector uh, is not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, I think a good thing. It would be good for the economy overall. Uh, fourthly, uh, we've got to have tax reform that acknowledges uh, not only do we have a, an effective income tax, uh, uh, that is the highest marginal income tax, which is really relative to its history, and you saw in the film, you know, under Dwight Eisenhower, the highest marginal income tax was 20 it was 91%, and even after deductions and tax credits, the effective rate was over 50%. Uh, but we also have to understand that the income tax is only one of several taxes. If you're going to see how regressive or how progressive the entire city tax system is, you've got to look at the Social Security, the payroll tax system. You've got to look at sales taxes at the state level, property taxes. Uh, most of the studies that I have taken a close look at concludes that our tax system overall is very regressive, uh, which at a time of heightening inequality is absurd. Uh, number five, we've got to do a better job, it seems to me, uh, on uh, constraining Wall Street. Uh, Wall Street right now, <laughs> and, 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 and let me just say a very quick word about that, because Wall Street, uh, I am a great believer that we've got to resurrect Glass Steagall. Uh, yes. And again, uh, and again, we can talk about this. I just don't think the vocal. Rules Did you debate that in internally when it was abolished in uh, the administration? It was abolished in 1999, and had I been there, I would have been furious uh, about the direction that some of my former colleagues wanted, you know, wanted the administration to go in. And absolutely, Bill Clinton. Uh, I think caved in on that, on the assumption that last people no longer uh, had any consequence. Well, it did have consequence. Uh, and we also, though, have got to uh, limit the size of the big banks. They are too big to fail, too big to jail, too big to curtail. Uh, and use antitrust laws if necessary. Uh, but let me, let me just say one final, number six. Uh, we've got to get big money out of politics. Amen. we can, uh, in my spare time, my other hat, I'm chairman of a wonderful, important citizens group called Common Cause. And, uh, and, uh, and I, I, I thoroughly believe that we, as Louis Brandeis said uh, in the 1890s, Justice Louis Brandeis, he said we can either have great wealth in the hands of a few people, or we can have a democracy, but we can't have both. And what was true in the 1890s is absolutely true today. 
the issue in, of income and, and wealth inequality is intimately tied to this issue of uh, money drowning out the voices of most people in politics. So those are the six pillars. Uh, now we can, each of them deserves an entire evening or an entire week of discussion on its own. Uh, but the next question, and I'm anticipating your questions and your question, David, the next question is, well, how do we do it? It's nice to talk about it. There are a lot of policy